So here's this thing called a breaker bar. And you, uh, you put your socket over here and then you provide force over here and you get great leverage from all the, the force is multiplied by the length of the lever. So similarly, when you have uh, something that has inertia, if I hold it in the middle and I try to spin it, it has a resistance to spinning. And that's because there's weight out here and weight out here and weight all the way down to the middle and weight all the way back out to the other end. Um, and so when I try to rotate it this way, um, it has a certain rotational inertia. Now, if I hold it this way and I spin it, it has much less rotational inertia. And the reason is that the rotational axis, let's say, was in the center of the bar. We have this very small, let's say, one centimeter distance from the outside to the inside. And these guys on the outside, these, these particles of mass on the outside, have way less leverage over the axis than they did when we were spinning it from the middle. So now here we have a bicycle trainer. This is a Kurt Kinetic Road Machine. And I'll bring your attention to this thing. So what do we have here? It's this big steel disc. Now over here we have something that exists to radiate heat and provide friction. But the thing I'm focused on here is this disc of steel on a bearing. And what you're going to see is that, you know, there's a distance here. I measured it. It's about uh, 15 and a half centimeters uh, from the center to the outside edge. And the bike wheel is, presses on this inner surface and causes this flywheel to spin. And this flywheel has inertia. And what that means is that when you put energy into accelerating this flywheel, it'll keep spinning when I, uh, when I stop uh, forcing it because it's slowly releasing its kinetic energy as heat out of the uh, friction device. And so what I wanna call your attention to is that the tire is contacting here and driving the the flywheel this way causing this thing to spin and this thing has a rotational inertia and the bike wheel that would be here would have a rotational inertia and I'm going to show you how to combine the two rotational inertias when the bike wheel has one rotations per minute and the flywheel has a different rotations per minute. So here we have the Wikipedia page for list moments of inertia. And it has a bunch of equations for uh, all different shapes and all different rotational axes. So like here's a rod spinning in the center, rod spinning from the end. And uh, the one that I am most interested in is going to be solid cylinder radius r, height h, and mass m. Uh, and the equation is right here for I. So here's how you compute the inertial moment of your bike trainer. So we have the equation from Wikipedia for a solid disk. And I know that from Kurt Kinetic, they say the flywheel weighs six pounds, which is 2.72 kilos. I measured the radius of the flywheel at eight centimeters, so point 0.08 meters. I plug that into the inertial moment of solid disk equation and I end up with 0 0.0174 kilograms per meter squared, which is a reasonable number for I for a bike trainer. And so for uh, finding the rotational inertia of your bicycle wheel, um, there's a whole lot of pieces to a bike wheel and probably the easiest approach is to uh, to use the settings page uh, in Golden Cheetah uh, for the virtual bike settings. And you'll see here that the rear wheel inertia is computed. So if you 
change your spoke weight, you'll see that this rear wheel inertia will change uh, number of spokes. Uh, and that'll that'll help you eyeball uh, what what is a reasonable value for your rear wheel. And so now we have the trainer flywheel inertial moment. And then using Golden Cheetah virtual bike settings, I determined that my rear wheel has an inertial moment of 0 0.07. So can I just add them together? One after the other? And the answer is no, because these two rotating things are rotating at different speeds. So to correctly combine the inertial moments, there's a trick where you can use the energy equation. And uh, I'm not gonna derive it here, but rotational kinetic energy is one half I times the rotational speed squared. So if we have omega bicycle wheel and we have omega trainer flywheel, well, trainer flywheel is 12 and a half of bicycle wheel. So we can make, we can compute the kinetic energy of the bike wheel, the kinetic energy of the flywheel. And uh, so here I pulled out the 12 and a half squared and then here I pull out the one half bicycle wheel squared. And what we're left with is this highlighted thing is the combined rotational uh, moment. And plugging in our values for combined I, we get 2.8 kilograms per meter squared. And that's the combined rotational inertia of the wheel and the bike trainer.